Hi, it's Dory. Welcome to the making of, of the Anthro Rap. The Anthropolo what? He and she asked me, making things that's under. I think it has to do with two things. One, um, growing up, hip hop rap is kind of a language of expression for me, and anyone who knows me, I tend to be very creative in how I try to express um, my academic deal. So, this is just an extension of what I normally do. And I think, in particular, I think in this case, um, I spent several months preparing for grants and things like that, which is very much about academic writing. And so I think there's a point in which, after doing so much academic writing, I have to do something very creative to kind of counterbalance between um, academic language, which sometimes doesn't feel completely like my language, and then other modes of expression that are more akin to the way in which I think um, the people in my communities and my friends and whatever express themselves. Um, and I guess the second aspect of why rap video is, um, again, I think it's about trying to um, communicate with a wider number of people about what key ideals are. And there's something about this sort of format of a, of a song that forces you to get down to the essence of what you're trying to express, but at the same time, you know, um, you can communicate to people on multiple levels, so not just intellectually, but emotionally, and if you're very, very lucky, um, sometimes spiritually. And so the idea of, of talking about design anthropology in the form of a rap is really about trying to develop a language of communication around what these ideals are that resonate with a wider number of people. Design translates values into tangible. It took about a week to really get solid with the um, the lyrics and a lot of it had to do with you know using a rhyming dictionary and trying to make sure that the rhymes express the story but at the same time that the rhymes weren't um, really uh, predictable like I hate it when I hear a song and it I could tell what the next lyric is just based on the rhyme so it's really just trying to to be expressive um, smart boasting all the things that's required for the rap genre, but also um, really trying to make sure that it's very well written. Uh, the music for the Deanthro rap was put together just using simple garage band. I sort of found was the, the funky Latin drums. After that, I think the next thing that I found was um, the, the upbeat piano. And that is just kind of, I want a, a sort of very uh, funky, urban, kind of old school sort of groove to it. Funky bass, yeah, around funky bass number three. And I just love that kind of like boom, 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 boom. So the rock guitar kind of gave it a kind of edgier feel. So for the middle part of the song, I actually ended up changing everything. So I changed the beat to um, what's called a vintage um, drum beat. Which should be familiar to some of you if you know the beginning of Rihanna's song. Um, I think it's Umbrella. The next thing I added was the lounge vibes. But then I added um, the rock guitar. It kind of came all together in terms of um, pulling the, the lyrics on top of it. So the recording studio um, for the song happened to be <laughs> my bathroom. Um, and that's mostly because it was the only place that had a really nice resonance and we had no equipment. So, like, so the recording mic I'm using is just the normal mic that we use when I'm doing Skype calls. Um, so any kind of resonance that we needed to get in terms of the singing was created by the resonance of my really small bathroom. Um, but it, I think it worked, I mean, in the sense that I like the sound that kind of is great in it. Yes, if I had more expensive mics or something, it probably would have been greater, but hey, I'm just an amateur. So it was just trying to put a good video together. Um, but as I explained before, that one of the things that I had to change once I introduced the music um, was the way in which the chorus got 
song, so it's sort of... Design translates values into tangible experience. What are your values? Seek the anthro's difference. And so we got a really nice resonance in the bathroom. <laughs> so the concept for the video is kind of having two personas. Uh, one is Dr. D, kind of the professorial type, and the other is um, um, <laughs> B-girl, um, D, who was sort of like a hip-hop chick. Um, and the idea was to kind of use the... Um, was to move between um, the prof pro professor um, to kind of scenes of different places that I've traveled to um, the scenes of like the, the B girl sort of moving. And um, you can see that it, you know, I had the action plot listed and, you know, the lyrics and the timing all sort of set down. And the sketches in the beginning <laughs> were actually quite detailed. But um, as I got more, because I ended up doing sort of about eight pages or whatever that um, they get messier and messier till, you know, I'm just kind of, you know, barely sketching what the ideal is going to be um, as I sort of work through everything. But um, having these, of course, is like a really important tool. And we took them out there when we were doing the filming. So I knew exactly which shots I was doing. I knew... Um, and could set it up there. I knew, you know, this is where it gets very sketchy. Um, we knew exactly what shots we're doing. We knew exactly the timing, so we can always go back into the music. I knew which ones were um, going to be the Dr. D um, versus the B-Girl D scenes. And, you know, again, everything was pretty much plotted out and made it very, very easy um, to... Um, to film, you know, along with the sort of shot list of what's close ups and things like that. Hi, we're in the car now and we are just um, driving to the school. One, two, three, testing, testing, one, two, three, testing. Deanther rap, scene number 20, take number one. Rap scene number 14, take number three. Hi, so I finished filming the interior scenes, of course, in my office. The boom went bust, along with trust. The I was an excited, um, a little bit concerned, because I don't, my camera person doesn't feel very confident about his camera skills, but we'll figure it all out. Anyway, the most important thing is to have fun. This is Dory, so we're at the, um, what street is this again? <laughs> um, it's the street where there's a graffiti in Melbourne, which I'll tell you later. Um, we've just finished um, our scenes here, all except the dance scene, which because there's so many people here, we're just not going to film it here. Some of our filming yesterday was completely and totally wasted because we didn't have the camera situated horizontally, but um, vertically. So now on next weekend, we will have to re-film absolutely everything we did yesterday. Yay! Even now from the car that the lighting is really not perfect um, for today's filming. So basically we're going to um, skip out today and try tomorrow when the sky is actually supposed to be overcast. Um, even though it was supposed to be overcast today as of last week, but it's Melbourne weather so it's completely changes. So uh, we'll try again tomorrow. For more insights, make decisions right. The was thrust. I'm Dory. We're heading down back downtown to hopefully film um, the last set of scenes again. Um, <laughs> the weather is only semi cooperating. Any other time, Melbourne would be full of rain, but the days we want it to be sort of not rainy, but at least overcast, it sort of is not cooperating. The sun is actually quite, you know, brilliant. But for now, it's a bit overcast, so hopefully we can sort of finish the scenes pretty quickly. Um, since I know all the rap by heart now and um, continue um, and get it all edited and hopefully released in the next couple of weeks. So, see you soon. Deantho rap video, take number one, scene number five, take number one. Deantho rap, scene number five, take number three. Deantho rap, scene number 12, take number one. Deantho rap, scene number 34, 35, take number two. Hi, this is Dory. So we're sitting here in the garage. I just did my costume change for preparing for the last dance scene. So we've actually done all of the other scenes. We're just preparing for the last dance scene. 
I'm a little bit nervous about this one, but I feel good about the dance, so fighting, we will do it. Um, so we will hopefully be done filming by probably 9 o'clock. Yeah. Yeah, we'll be done filming by 9 o'clock, and then I'll spend most of the day trying to edit. So thanks. So we have finished filming. We're making our way back down from the CBD to go get some breakfast because it's only about 9.30 in the morning. Yes, we started very early, around 6.30, 7 a.m. Um, so filming with Will, the weather's held out. It's gonna, the clouds have sort of come back. Um, I mean, so the clouds have sort of left. Um, so the sun is coming out, um, but we made it just in time. Um, lesson learned, uh, cobblestone, high heel shoes, and pirouettes do not go along well together, um, but we muddled through. So now is the big challenge of editing everything into the perfect video sequence, and then uh, we should premiere in a week or so. Thanks! The um, post-production was all done in iMovie, which was not the ideal choice, but it was what's on my laptop, so that's what I had to use. Um, and literally just drag, drop and drag everything into place. The most difficult aspect, of course, was getting um, the words and the, um, and the music to sort of sync up. And so I've spent days and days and days and days. I'm trying to get those things um, aligned up. But again, most of the tools that were there, like for the transitions were there and all of the tools for um, being able to do the titles were there. And so for the most part, it's, it was able to accomplish, I think, what I wanted it to accomplish. Um, and like I said, it took about the most of the time that I've actually spent um, is actually in the editing and getting everything together and, um, and you know, making sure that it's a coherent one. Um, some of the key choices we made, I, I made the choice to do black and white, um, mostly because I knew there was going to be a lot of unevenness in the, um, in the, um, in the recording of things because we weren't using any special lights and you know that was why we had all the difficulty with um, during choosing the overcast days. Um, for all of the of the of the um, filming so that at least that part was even but we didn't use any special lights or any special equipment so I figured that if we use um, black and white that would kind of even things out and give everything a coherency in spite of night not having coherency with all of the special lighting equipment that you normally achieve to do that and um, with the exception of the one sort of dance section which just because the um just because the, um, you know, the scene was so beautiful up in um, Hosier Lane that, you know, I wanted one little bit of color to be able to show in the video just so that people get sort of a, a taste of how amazing it was to actually do the shooting um, in, that, in that alleyway. Design translate. Um, so that's a little bit about how we um, made the de design the anthro the anthro rap video. Um, I hope you actually enjoy the video. So now we're gonna show you the whole entire thing put together. Um, so um, thanks for watching. And again, if you have any questions, um, feel free to email me at etunstall dot swin dot edu dot au. Um, follow me on Twitter. So I'm at dory underscore Deanthro um, on Twitter, uh, and um, I hope you enjoy the video. I we had a really good time making it. It was lots of fun making it. So I hope you have lots of fun watching it. Thanks. <laughs>